Hi, I'm Scott from Wellsford Heritage Farm. I just thought I'd give you a bit of a run through today on how I process lambs. I am a butcher so I make it look pretty easy but there's lots of ways you can do it and anyone can do it if they follow a few instructions and there's lots of good books out there that you can read and find out how and where to put your cuts and get the most out of your produce that you grow out in your paddock. I'll show you a bit around my, my little meat processing room first and uh, then we'll get into cutting up this lamb. Right, I'll just give you a walk through our meat processing room. There's just a, a cabinet with a few stores that we keep, egg cartons, preserves, a few pumpkins from this year's harvest. A Bradley pellet smoker, good little machine. We make bacon, cabana, cabanossi, um, smoked chickens, smoked turkey, all sorts of things like that. They're a pretty easy machine to use, self-explanatory. A um, little bit of practice, you can make some really good stuff out of one of them. It's a wrapping machine. We wrap everything, put it on trays. I don't cry back the stuff. It's uh, it's a little bit too expensive to cry back every every cut, especially if there's only a couple of people in the house. So I wrap and label everything. So when you get to the bottom of the freezer, you know exactly what it is still. It's a mincer. It's a very old basic sort of a mincer, but I can make mince meat, sausages, all that sort of stuff with that. That's just a a wooden bench we put it across the top of our double sinks just to make it a bit more room a bit more bench space it's a little barnes junior bandsaw it's an old bandsaw it would have been in a butcher shop once upon a time it's only a single phase 240 volt works quite well you can get them quite cheap if you look around hunt around on marketplace and stuff like that teflon cutting bench with a nice big stainless bench underneath it it's got to be sturdy and the more space you have the easier it is a little hand saw a lot of things you can do with a hand saw or a chopper so you don't have to have a band saw but i use a band saw because it's easy i use very basic knives you can buy good butcher's knives and they're not that expensive. Don't waste your money on some of the gimmick knives that are around today. I use Victory Knox knives. Um, they're quite easy to sharpen. They're a softer stainless steel. And well, I've liked them, I've used them all my life, so they must be, mustn't be too bad. I have a cool room. It's the doorway to the cool room. This whole cut up area is only six metres by two and a half metres. It was an old side office, it's all made out of cool room panelling. I cut a hole in the wall and put my cool room so I can walk straight into my cool room. Slide the door open. Got two lambs I processed earlier in the week. Um, they're good lambs, crossbred lambs. Uh, I'll grab one out and we'll start processing it. So here's our lamb, I brought him out of the cool room. I've just weighed him up, he's 23 kilos. <clears throat> so live weight he would have been around the 50 kilo mark. First we'll take the fore quarter off. Here's the go down. I count from the, from the front of the shape. I count up about four, sometimes five ribs. Put a bit of a put the hand in there, count the ribs up. Two, three, four. Usually mark between the fourth and the fifth rib. It's on both sides. I 
like that. Let's go towards the back. Same on this side. Two, three, four, five. Through the breastbone with your with your bone and knife, and just line it up with your other cut on the other side, and right the way around. So I get my hacksaw. This is a proper meat hacksaw. Make sure your lines are lined up. clean cut like that. Then we'll take the lines off. If you look, there's a bit of a dip here. So that's your rump or your chump chops. In a cow we call it a rump steak. In sheep we call it chump. So that goes from about there to here. That's your line. That's your middle line and then your, your cutlets or your racks. So I look for a bit of a, a soft spot just through there. There's his sort of like his hip bone. I'll run my knife through there. Right through. Try and keep it square. You go from this side. It's just at the bottom of his tail there. Get the mark through from this side. the way around and if you hold the middle of his back break it off like that so I hang the leg by one one leg so the inside's looking towards you Marking right straight down the middle. You should be able to run your knife straight through like that. Can't turn him around. Run your knife down both sides of the back of his tail. Like that. And then both sides of his tail on the inside. Just fall in half. There's his tail out. So, after I've broken the lamb up, this is what I end up with the full quarter, the loin, and your two legs with the chumps still on them. Now, you can leave that. If you've got a big family, you can leave that like that, that's that's a full leg. You just mark your shank. You can joint your shank with your saw or you can run it through the band saw. Shank jointed. And for these legs, like I said, we're only a couple of people in the family, sometimes we have visitors, sometimes the kids come home, take that piece off, just trim all this up, that yeah, really, some people like a little fat on it, I like to make it look nice and neat, I don't like the excess fat, so just trim it up as I go. Just mark how thick you want your chops on the back of it. So I usually take five or six chops off the back. What's this cut called? 
a day of chump chops or on a cow that'd be that'd be called your rump so we'll do the other one the same take that bit of flank off we'll use that for mince or sausages if you're going to keep if you're going to keep some for mince and sausages, don't, don't put all this fat in. You shouldn't mix fat like that in. It's alright to have a little bit of fat left on the pieces. But don't mix clumps of fat like that in it. Trim your chumps up again. Mark where your shank's gonna go. And then just start at the other end. Do your five or six chops again. chunk drops if you put on how many how many are you gonna eat so don't over pack them present them as anyone can present them as good as a butcher can so if you make it look nice and dry make sure you clearly label it can't emphasize that enough so many people say to me I get to the bottom of the fridge freezer what it is anymore. So I'll take all the chump chops on one tray. So there's enough for a meal. I'll put the legs in a plastic bag. They're a little bit too big for the for the trays. thing to get in the habit of is taking the, making sure there's not too much bone dust on especially if you use the bandsaw scraper like this just scrape the bone dust off you can get them from most butcher supplies just make the bone dust is on them bone dust will be the first thing that goes off in the bag, a nice little knot in the end of it, and that'll keep it pretty good in the freezer. Don't process too much at once, you don't want too much in your freezer. Um, you want to keep it to a minimum what you'll eat before it actually starts getting freezer burnt. 
do the line next. I'll just split it down the middle on the bandsaw. You can do this with a handsaw, but I might show you in a later vid video me doing this on the bandsaw. planks, there your middle lines, and there your racks. So you notice I took the chine bone off the back of the rack, now I'm going to take the backbone off, which I should be able to just run through with my knife, if I took the chine bone off right. I take the feather bone from the quarter four quarter out, just run that little bit off the back there, and then I should be able to just run my knife straight each one. Ready for wrapping, just repeat the process on the other side. So there's a million ways you can you can do this. This is just how I do it. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there saying I do it different, but that's fine. As long as in the end you get what you want to eat out of it. You try not to waste too much. And there's no race. You do it at your own pace. With your lines. There's your mid lines. So I take I take the fat off the inside. I take the core fat out. So that'd be the fat that was around the kidney. Always mark them chops. So you mark them however, however thickness you'd like them. Some people like them thin, some people like them thick. Just run your knife through like this. Same again with this side. Take all the channel fat out, core fat, which is where your kidney sits. That little feather bone. And just mark your chops again. I saw that knife, I thought the tip had broken off it. So can you explain what that knife is and why it's shaped like that? 
that knife actually has had the tip broken off it. Oh. And I resurrected it, chopped it a bit further back, sharpened it up again. It was a brand new knife when I broke the tip off it, so I wasn't going to waste it. So this is the flank. I make spare ribs out of the flanks. A lot of people take all the bones out. You can use them for sausages. You can use them for whatever you like. There's a bit of a bit of cartilage there that you can run your knife through. You don't need the saw. So I run that bit off like that. Then I just take the bone out. Take that bit of gristle off. If you're gonna use it for sausages, you want this inside skin out. It's chewy and you don't want to eat it. And I'll take this back skin off as well. Just mark it along there, hold that. Like that. And then I just run my knife between each bone. Same again, you can see a little white mark there, that's where the cartilage is. Takes a little bit of practice. Once you've been doing it a while, and you can practice a few times, take your time. Just don't race. Take your time. Get it right, get as much out of your product as you can. Again, take that, that bit off the back, so it's a lot of the fat. And that back skin, it's not much good to eat. Once again, just run your knife between the bones. There's a little bit of cartilage along the back here. It's usually pretty, pretty easy to chop through. Come over here and we'll run these line chops through the saw. You can do it with a chopper, but because I've got a band, I will use it. There's your line chops or cut. I'll say, keep them nice. Lay them out on the bench. Put them how you'd like to eat them. How you'd like to buy them in the shop. It's a beautiful little lamb. It'd be 
be a perfect lamb in the shop. You don't have to trim a lot off it. It's exactly how you want. Quarters through the bandsaw. If I uh, wasn't going to cut them up to chops, I'd bone it all out, take all the bones out, and roll them up to roasts. But today we're going to just cut these up into chops. First, we take dust off them and just lay them nice on the tray like that. We call these barbecue chops. And I'll pack four on a tray like that. That look pretty good. With the round bone chops, I take 
take the ribs out of the bottom, take a bit of fat off the top, and where we bark the bones, the round bones with the saw earlier, once the ribs are out, I can just run my knife through. We call these four quarter chops. We call the other part barbecue chops. Just again, make sure you scrape the bone dust off. This makes them a bit nicer. Some saws will, won't leave a lot of bone dust on, this one doesn't. There's your shanks, your two shanks, two necks. And we run the, just run the ribs out like that, run your knife between the meat and the ribs. Peel a little bit of fat off the back there, off the tail. You can see where I've opened them up with the saw. Then just run your knife through. Four on a tray. Might have to scrape a little bit of bone dust off. These are pretty good. Does. So with your four quart your barbecue chops again. Dust off. Three or four on a tray. In another video, I'll show you how to how I bone and roll a four quarter at another time when I process some lambs next time. This is the final outcome. We have five packets of barbecue chops, two packets of four quarter chops, two packets of chump chops, two nice big legs of lamb, two shanks, two necks, two packets of spare ribs, five packets of loin chops, two packets of cutlets. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video today and hope you can learn something out of it. That's all. Thank you.